Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And today's video is a very special one because at the time of this recording, we've hit over 20,000 subscribers. And I think that is absolutely unreal. So I just wanna give you a huge thanks to all the people that have supported the channel for liking, for commenting, for watching the videos. Um, honestly, I didn't expect to get here. I remember when I was on 100 subscribers and I thought that was absolutely incredible. And then getting to 1,000 and then all the recent support in the last couple months, I couldn't thank you guys enough. And so I thought it'd be a cool idea to do a little bit of a Q&A where I sit down and answer a few of your questions. So thanks to everybody that submitted a question through Instagram, that commented, um, that sent me a personal message. I appreciate it. And I broke down the questions into a bunch of different sections, study, medical school, more personal stuff. So if you just wanna look at those sections, I put timestamps to everything in the description below. So you can just fast forward to whatever you wanna see. I also apologize in advance if I pronounce any of your names incorrectly, but I'll try my very best. But with all that out of the way, let's get into the first few questions about medicine and medical school. And the first one that I have here is from I am Bitsaw and QP Wow Iru 3402. And they ask, if you're not a medical student, do you have any alternative career plans? And hypothetically, what would you have done if you hadn't got into med right after honors? The most obvious choice after honors would have been to go directly into a PhD or to do a master's degree if I hadn't gone into med. Um, because I was with a good lab team and I had all the resources there, continuing my project seemed like a pretty much a good fit. It'd give me a few more years to try again for medicine and it would develop my lab skills in case I wanted to pursue a career in lab research later on. So I got a bunch of different questions from you guys asking me about what medical specialty that I want to go into what um, specific areas of medicine I'm interested in the most. And I've thought about this for a while and it's hard to choose a favorite, it's hard to choose something that's specific, but I've always been interested in infectious diseases. I had a lot of family experience with my brother. He had MRSA sepsis, he was very sick. And that whole experience made me really interested in all the bacteria around us, um, how we're gonna treat it, the rise of antibiotic resistance. I think it's a very important aspect, especially with everything that's going on. Um, something that will be a topic that will come back to us and be of vital importance in the future. So definitely an area that I might want to work in. So I finished Neurology Block last month and I found it a lot of fun. I found learning about the different pathways, although how complex it was, um, it was very interesting to see how direct lesions can result in clinical signs. So neurology is definitely uh, an area of medicine that I'm interested in. And honestly, anything to do with surgery, that just seems like a, a really cool aspect of medicine that I haven't tried before, that I haven't experienced. So I'm definitely keeping my options open, but those specialties th seem really cool. So for the next question, a lot of people ask this in a bunch of different ways. When did you get the inspiration to pursue a medical career? What are your motivations and inspirations while studying for medicine? How did you realize medicine was for you? So thanks for having this um, strong interest in sort of my medicine story and why I wanted to do it. To keep it short, I really wanted to do it because not only is it a field where you're constantly learning, where the field is constantly evolving, where you have that patient responsibility. So it's not only learning about the content through the books um, on the screens, like doing all the theory behind it, but it's also that personal connection that you're making with the patient and how you're having a direct impact to change the course of their treatment, to change the course of their lives. I think that's a really, really cool aspect that seems very unique to medicine. Another reason why I really wanted to um, pursue medicine is because I had a family experience. Like I talked about before, uh, my brother was in hospital for a very long time and he was going in and out of care and seeing a bunch of different doctors and seeing how they all interact and how they communicated to the family and how they affected us and how different traits of different doctors, we either like them, we either don't. But that whole experience really motivated me when I was younger that this is a career that I see myself doing and I wanna have the same impact that those doctors had on my family, which was extremely positive and extremely helpful. Next question is from Jean Allen and she asks, what are the requirements to study medicine in Australia and how long is it? So I'm currently at the University of Sydney. I'm a second year student and the program here is a doctor of medicine, an MD, which lasts for four years. It's a postgraduate degree, meaning that we have to complete a bachelor's before it. So I did a bachelor of medical science. Uh, but you can do really anything. You could have done a law degree, a commerce degree, engineering, whatever. In terms of other unis in Australia, they offer school leaver pathways. So that's straight after high school, you can go into medicine. And these are generally a little bit longer. So in Australia, it ranges from about four to six years, depending on what school you go to. So the next questions are from Kim Piap and from Ferrara Med 03. And they ask, what's the hardest subject you've ever took since your first year of medical school? And what are your most and least favorite blocks you've done so far? So my least favorite block would have to be musculoskeletal. 
I found that it's very limited in nature. There's only a specific amount of diseases. You deal with a lot of arthritis and it's really just anatomy. Like I said before, my favorite block would have to be neurology. And in terms of the most difficult subject, I would have to say that is hematology. Going, having to go through all the different pathologies to know what all the different blood films look like, um, reading through blood tests and knowing the coagulation pathways. I found that extremely time consuming and difficult to grasp. And definitely another thing would be cardiovascular physiology. There's just so much in there, so much relation to physics. And I will probably have to review cardiovascular physiology and hematology at some point, but for now, we will just leave it out. Chris Murphy 98 asks, what has med school been like during quarantine? So we've been on quarantine having online class for, for the last say four or five weeks. And it's definitely been a big transition from going to class and having everything as normal to staying at home and having the days merge into a big mush and not knowing which day is the next. Um, it's definitely been difficult. How it's been run now is our clinical days, like our hospital days, they've gone online as well. As for the lectures, I feel like that's still very good because we can watch all the recordings and you can slow it down and you can watch it on your own pace. And in terms of tutorials, they've been very much moved to Zoom calls and to Zoom workshops. And there's definitely been a lot of work going into the resources for the next couple months because we might be having online class for a lot longer um, than we originally anticipated. So we'll just have to see how it all pans out. Many of you are asking me what my ethnicity was. And a lot of you actually guessed it correctly. I am half Filipino and I'm half Scottish. So I'm mixed race. And so to all my Filipino viewers out there, hello, I see you. What are your hobbies? So I have a few hobbies. Obviously YouTube and doing this whole video stuff um, is one of my hobbies. I consider it like a little sort of side project that I do in med school. I also like running. I do athletics. Currently we're not really having training at the moment. Um, because of the whole quarantine stuff. I really like playing the guitar. You can see my guitar in the background. And I've been recently learning language. So I've been learning Mandarin for the last couple months and that's been a lot of fun. And of course, I can't leave out video games. Um, sometimes when I'm bored, uh, when I'm just looking to de-stress and do nothing, I like to play a few good video games. Currently, I'm playing Overwatch. So if you guys are Overwatch players, please give me some tips because I am horrible right now. <laughs> Next question is from the Savage Uncle. Did you start your YouTube channel with a professional camera or with your phone? So I thought about doing YouTube a few months before I made the channel. So I decided to get a nice camera or at least a better camera than my phone to get me started. So I'm currently using the same camera that I'm filming this video with, which is the Canon M50. And it's been pretty good. It served me well and I've had no complaints this far. Are you introverted or extroverted? So I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I can be extroverted when I need to be, but I also don't really mind staying at home and having my own alone time. And also from Espia Niyama asks, do you have a favorite podcast? Currently, I'm really liking the Jordan V. Peterson podcast. And like I said in my previous video, um, I enjoy his ideas and what he talks about. I apologize if you're not a fan, but I also really like the Tim Ferriss show and Indie Hackers, uh, Smart Passive Income with Pat Flynn, I think it is. They have a pretty good podcast and talk about some interesting things. So I've been really enjoying their content. Next question is from Yua Moy. I probably butchered that name, so I'm sorry. She asks, what is your favorite song at the moment? And I would probably have to say Skeletons by Keshi. I used it in a vlog and I'm really liking the song. It's got a really chill vibe to it. Um, I love the guitar in the background. So it's probably my favorite song at the moment. The first question that we have here from a bunch of you guys is how many hours do you study? How much study do you do per day? And so this very much varies depending on the day, depending on what I'm going through. Am I in the exam period or am I at the start of the block? But general rule of thumb, I'll try to do all of the mandatory work. So if I'm allocated five lectures to do on the day, to do the five lectures, and then on top of any allocated mandatory work, I'll try aim for at least two hours. So say if I have a big day of prax and I finish at four, I wanna do at least two or three hours on top of that. But if I have a complete day off, like a free day, I try to do maybe four to six hours. And that's sort of where I've been aiming for for the last couple of months. Pedro Alberto asks, what do you do if you feel like not studying at all? And yes, there have been so many times when I've just not been in the mood, uh, especially with quarantine, it really kills the motivation. So what I've been doing when I don't feel like studying is I'll try to do something at least productive. So I'll do some reading, um, I might play guitar, uh, trying to learn Chinese, so I've been doing some Mandarin practice, go for a run, and play video games. Alessandro Frover asks, 
what do you think about active recall for studying? And basically what it is, is to constantly test yourself. So instead of passively reading, um, say a textbook and going through and highlighting points, you're passively letting information sink in. Instead, what you wanna be doing is making questions for yourself, doing practice questions, doing flashcards, and looking at something and then being like, what is the answer to that question? And that way you're actively trying to get information from your head and it's been shown that you're more likely to remember things and it's a more effective study tool than just by passively reading. So I think it's a good technique and I try to use it all the time when I'm studying. Niata G asks, how do you stay focused or not get too bored while studying, especially when it comes to the harder topics? Also, how do you retain concentration during online lectures? I like to really listen to music when I'm studying and that makes it a lot more interesting for me. It helps kill the boredom. When it comes to the harder topics, I like to do them first in the day. I find that you're more energized as soon as you wake up. So just by tackling the hard stuff first and then doing the easier stuff later, that's better in terms of your mental stamina throughout the day. In terms of retaining concentration during online lectures, I've been trying this thing where I'll stand up, move my body around, at least get the blood flowing so I'm not just sitting there for like 40 minutes. But I do agree that it's definitely difficult and I've been trying my best to stay focused. Tan Havo Anrith asks, what are your go-to productivity apps? So if you haven't seen it already, I did a video last week on the apps that I use on my phone, so check that out. But really, Anki, Notion, those have been my go-tos recently. Dong.th asks, what is your most valuable micro efficiency technique? And for this one, I think it's to make shortcuts for yourself. So when you're writing notes or when you're revising things, if you have like a concept or something that you've been studying, say I'm looking at peptic ulcer disease, that's what I did last week. And you're constantly writing down the word peptic ulcer disease in your notes and you're repeating it and it's coming up again. Instead, just make an acronym for yourself, PUD. And don't just do this for peptic ulcer disease, do it for everything that you're talking about. So just when you're studying and when you're writing things out, you know what it means and it will help you save time on just repeating it or writing it over again. So at least you're just getting the information down pat and you're just revising instead of wasting time writing. So the White Coat Sunshine asks, how did you find your study style? So I probably found my study style a few years ago when I noticed that when I was in an exam, to remember the answer to a question, I would visualize the slide from the lecture notes or I'd visualize something that I'd written in my notes and it would be like I'm looking at the page, but it's not in front of me and that's how I'd remember it. And from there I'm like, well, I'm a visual spatial learner. And so since then I've tried to incorporate using diagrams um, to write notes for myself, mnemonics, to write things down on paper because that really helps solidify the content in my brain. And I think it's worthwhile if you haven't already to find out your learning style so that when you're studying, you're maximizing your time and you're being the most efficient. So Anne Bevan asks, tips for learning or memorizing all the anatomy terms, names, etc." So great question, because anatomy gets difficult. So what I suggest is getting an atlas and finding the model diagrams for the topic that you're looking at and then to either make flashcards out of it or to use a program like Anki and then use image occlusion. So what that basically means is you have your perfect diagram here with all the different labels around it. And then you might have a label here, label here, label here. You can hide the labels on the flashcards and then every time you turn over your flashcard, you're able to see what the label is. Atten Cause asks, do you think it is effective to study until midnight? And for some reasons I have to work before study. Everybody has different times in the day when they're productive. For me, it's in the morning and then late at night. So if you're someone that's super productive late at night, or if you're someone that's got a lot of work during the day and you have to come home and that's your only free slot, make the most of it. There's nothing that says that it's, it's worse or better to do it in the morning than to do it at night. It's just whatever period of time is most productive for you, whenever you feel most energized and whenever you can fit it into your schedule. So it's all about creating a reliable routine that incorporates your energy levels and that incorporates your uh, work schedule for the week. Cam.Lee asks, is Notion or Anki better for learning slash revising material for both school and university? So the short answer is Anki, and that's because it's a flashcard system based on space repetition where you're constantly looking at something um, a day later, a week later, a month later, and that really helps beat the forgetfulness curve. In terms of Notion, I really use it more as a resource bank. It has all my notes and all my um, topics in one place. So if I ever need a reference, I'll go back to it. But in terms of trying to test myself using principles like Active Recall, I much prefer using Anki for that. Jerick Kaduya asks, do you prefer studying alone or in groups? Why not both? I, I think both are great in their own ways. I probably prefer to study alone 
when I'm trying to learn the concepts for the first time. So I'll go over my own notes, watch the lectures, do my own private revision. But I think studying in a group is a great tool to get you motivated, to have accountability partners, and also to have people to bounce ideas off of. Another great thing about group study is that you can test each other and then you can teach each other. And those are two crucial things to put everything that you're learning into long-term memory. Because honestly, there's no better way to know that you understand a concept than to teach another person. Lucy FXT asks, what's your trick to keep concentrating? So I have nothing to say here apart from drink a lot of water, get a good night's sleep, organize a good routine, and you'll be feeling more focused when you come to study. I have some questions here from Hart Cross and Rich Jennifer, and they ask, have you ever failed in any exam? And how do you cope or deal with failed exams? And so I have failed an exam in the past. In my very first year of university, I was doing advanced physics and I failed my very first physics exam. It was a mid-semester exam. I lost track of time. I didn't really know the concepts that well and I got my mark back. I think it was like nine out of 20. So I didn't, I didn't do very well. And I remember after that exam, I was absolutely gutted. I went home thinking to myself, is uni even right for me? I was a young, naive kid, straight. I'm going straight from high school to uni and then being like, this is so different. I don't have any friends. I don't know what's going on and I'm failing my exams. What's the point? And so after this, I obviously thought about, you know, am I good enough for it? But I really tried, I really pushed myself and I thought, okay, I can do it. I did physics in high school. This should be a walk in the park. I shouldn't be failing these exams. And I made a study plan. I worked towards reading the chapters that I needed to do doing practice questions and really just putting in a lot of work. And it probably wasn't as efficient as I would be doing now, but I put in the time and I ended up finishing with an okay mark. I think I ended up with like a high credit or a low distinction. And I think when you have a failed exam or when you fail something, don't look at it like, damn, I'm not good enough. I don't have the capability. Instead, focus on what were areas you can improve on? What's your next course of action gonna be? and why should I be trying harder? If you really want something, if you really wanna do well in something or be competent in a skill or get your degree so you can work in a specific field, if you think about the why I'm doing it, that's really gonna give you the push to put in the work so you get there. So I got a lot of questions on time management. A few of them here are from Sincerely Nurse Jen. How do you balance your studies with content creation like YouTube and Instagram? From Suja, how do you manage your time for studying? Dane Albert asks, how do you balance YouTube, social life, and medical school? And Michelle Abanto, how do you balance your health while having a busy schedule? And so I think when it comes to time management, you have a lot of tasks at hand. Say if you're a university student and you're also trying to um, juggle part-time work and juggle, say, a relationship. How I like to organize my time is I like to compartmentalize what I'm doing. So say for YouTube, I usually spend one whole day dedicated to doing YouTube stuff, replying to comments, to thinking of ideas, to filming videos, editing, that sort of stuff. One day a week, I will do YouTube stuff. And that is the only thing that I'll do on that day. That's how I operate. And then for study, I'll organize specific blocks of time. So if I have a class from nine to 12, and then I have the rest of the afternoon free, I'll organize my time effectively. I'm going to do study, revising this topic from two to four. And then I'm gonna go for a run, and then I'm gonna do more practice questions from six to eight and having a good study schedule and a good timetable of what you're gonna do in the week that will really help know what's coming next so that you're not disorganized and so that you're not wasting time figuring out what's the next course of action. And a lot of people have talked about this concept of Parkinson's law, that the amount of time that you allocate for a task, you will eventually fill up that time to complete it. So if I allocate four hours to do an assignment, it will take me the whole four hours and it really helps by setting mini deadlines for yourself. That really helps me, and hopefully it helps you guys too. So Sarah Swatips asks, pursuing a career in health science can be really hard and frustrating. It would be great to see how you cope with the stress and how to stay motivated. For me, I try not to get stressed because I like to prepare effectively. When it comes to exam time, I don't really wanna be feeling overwhelmed. I don't wanna be looking at the curriculum and thinking to myself, I don't know this topic. I, that doesn't make sense to me. I did practice questions last night and I got really confused. I like to prepare ahead. So to really prevent stress and to defeat stress, I think the best way is to prepare. If you have an exam in four weeks, don't allocate the last two weeks to cram. Spend the whole four weeks doing slow revision over time. And when you get your mark, it's not an indicator to how smart or silly you are. 
it's got nothing to do with that because you're still the same person that walked in before the exam. All it is is a reflection by the amount of work that you put in in preparation. And another thing that really helps with overcoming stress is to have a good friendship circle. I can't stress this enough, but if you're in university or at school, work, it's really important to have a good group of friends to bounce ideas off of, to talk to when you're feeling down, and to just get general advice about anything that's going on in your life. So Angel1226 asks, does being a YouTuber interrupt your studies? Well, thank you for calling me a YouTuber. I don't really consider myself a YouTuber. I just consider myself a student who does YouTube videos. But at the moment, it hasn't interrupted my studies and it hasn't affected things too much. And if I start noticing that things are changing, that my marks are dropping, you probably won't see me. So Al3Booty and ZZX675 ask, what is your motto? And if I were to have a motto, it would be this. It would be to turn up and persevere. If you do those two things, I think you can pretty much accomplish anything. Well, that's gonna wrap up all the questions that I have for you guys today. Thanks so much to everybody that submitted a question that asked me something. I obviously couldn't get around to all of them. There was just so many. If you look at this, it, it, just, it just goes on and on and on. So thank you to everybody that submitted something. I hope I got around to most of them. I tried to group them up into categories, into similar questions. So I hope I answered yours. But if you enjoyed the video, can you remember to smash that like button and subscribe to see more content like this? But thanks so much for watching, and until next time, this was Sebastian. Stay sharp. We got history, got me feeling a nostalgia when you look at me. Thinking about what could have happened or what could have been. Finally, your face, I know ain't that a sight to see. Take my time and take your clothes off one more time, it be.